Okay, so here we are. Once again, uh, my name is Chuck Jones. Uh, I'm owner of River City Kites. Uh, that's at, uh, located at 5519 uh, Highway 153. Okay, right, right where the old Holcombs used to be on Berean Lane. Okay, which is where, uh, which leads to Berean Academy up the street. Uh, across the street from the gallery, uh, art gallery thing, and then the uh, Aldi's and uh, Gold Gym between Gad Road and Target. So I'm open Tuesdays through Saturdays. Tuesday through Thursday, I'm open from 12 to 6, and then on uh, Friday and Saturday from 10 till 6. On Sunday, I try to fly kites out at the sculpture field at Montague Park in the afternoon. Okay, today, <clears throat> um, oh, I, so I want to say that I am on uh, Facebook, I try to do Instagram, and I'm, uh, and I'm posting these videos on YouTube, okay? Now, uh, I do want to say, uh, do, give a little shout out to the American Kite Flyers Association. Okay, I've been around since the 60s. Uh, I've been a member since the late 70s, uh, off and on, and then uh, permanently pretty much since about the early 90s. Okay, and uh, great group of people. I've got friends all over the world. It's really an amazing group of people. Okay, uh, we're going to work on the uh, Eddie Bow Kite, but first I want to show you real quick what we did yesterday. This is the Shield Kite. I don't know if you can see it flying out. There we go, that's better. Okay, that's the Shield Kite. Okay, and uh, we did that yesterday. Okay, today we're going to we're going to uh, we're going to build the Eddie Bow Kite. Okay. The Eddie Bow was uh, named after a fellow named William Eddie, E-D-D-Y, okay, <clears throat> okay, and there we go, William Eddie, okay, so the thing is, is that William Eddie went out and uh, he uh, uh, discovered, he was looking for a kite that would lift weather instruments, okay? And uh, this is at the turn of the century uh, before the 1900s, okay, late 1800s. So <clears throat> that's when a lot of things are going on in the aviation world. Uh, so uh, William found this kite in Malaysia. It's the same width as it is tall, and it did not need a tail. It was stable, <clears throat> okay? So this distance right here, this is an Eddie kite. It's a diamond kite. Okay, that's another name for it. But the diamond kites tend to be longer. They tend to be taller than they are wide. The Eddie kite is the same height here. We'll call it A. And this is right here. This is going to be... Uh, uh, let's not call it A. Let's call it X, uh, Y, and X. Okay. So the okay, <clears throat> X is equal to Y in this case because the height is the same as the width. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, and this point right here. Okay. Okay, that spot right there is one-fifth of the whole distance. One-fifth of the height is that distance right near, which is going to be equal to what we're calling H1. Okay. We'll get, we'll get to that in a little bit. Oh, my goodness. It's making more of a mess. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> Let's get on with this. <clears throat> how do we make the pattern for, for the... Uh, how do we make the pattern for the Eddy Kite? First of all, uh, we uh, we get our handy dandy paper right here. Uh, we're going to do just a half of the the kite. We don't need to do the whole kite. I'm going to put this underneath here so I can uh, lift it up and show you. Uh, so I'm going to go uh, over here. This is the same fabric I used to do 
the last two coats. I'm going to take my <clears throat> measuring tool, in this case being a, a ruler, okay, and I'm going to measure over. Uh, let's see. Let's make it. Uh, let's make it a, a four foot, a four inch kite. Okay, four inches. Okay, so we're going to measure over here four inches. I'm going to put a spot right there. Okay, now I got here. Well, what's one fifth of uh, four? Uh, one fifth of four. Let's see if this will work. equal to four fifths okay and uh, four fifths okay is going to equal to okay uh, 0 0.8 and if you think about your uh, uh, I'm gonna say that's almost equal to uh, 0 0.875 uh, okay which is equal to seven eighths okay so I'm going to make it about seven eighths of an inch down. Okay, this is an estimate, but it works. Okay, it's an estimate that works. So we're going to measure uh, over 0.78. Uh, uh, let's see, one, two, three. Yeah, all right. 0.78. Okay, or not 0.78, but seven over eight inch, seven eighths of an inch. Now from that point, we're going to measure out four inches. Okay. No, not four inches, two inches, because it should be half the height of the kite. Okay. Straight out. And we're going to push the line right through here. I'll do it in marker here. And I'll do the same thing over here. Okay. Just a straight down thing here. Okay, we're going to go ahead and draw in this right here, just so I remember where my cross piece is going to go. Okay. So I have this right here, okay? This is, uh, <clears throat> okay, so we have those uh, increments right there. <clears throat> now I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. Pull out my scissors. Careful to cut on the line. If you're going to be on one side or the other, stay on that side from the get-go. Okay, so there we have my cut-out piece right here, okay? Now I'm going to cut a little notch right here where this uh, cross piece is going to follow because now I want to have see I want to have a uh, a notch to know where to tie my string <clears throat> now the materials I've got a poop uh, a puppy pooper pooper scooper or, or poop bag here <clears throat> you can get these for a whole roll of them for you know a dollar and they got these pretty these funky uh patterns on here you see so you got artwork right there okay now I want to do a uh, first of all I'm going to cut the end off okay because that gets in the way <clears throat> I'll get my razor blade out okay I'll be careful if I want I'll lay a, a metal ruler across here which helps protect my ha hands a little bit which is a good idea okay and I decide okay since there's only a, a picture on one side but not on the other side Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, find the picture I want. These are pizzas. In pizza we trust is what it says. So I want that right in the middle of my, I think I want that in the middle of my uh, kite. Let's see, as a matter of fact, we could put it so that it goes. Uh, see, it's going to be tw two of these right here, okay? Two of these right here. So that'll fit right there. Uh, let's do it right through here. I'm going to have to open it up a little bit. Actually, I could just do it right here. Let's just fold it. Okay. 
we're going to lay it on there so that it, the letter, letter writing is up and we'll cut out with my razor blade and we'll cut right along that line there okay right along the edge of the pull it out. Now we should have two of these here, so I'm not going to need both of them. But there's a little pink one, and here's this guy right here. Okay. So you end up getting that right there. Okay. Let's see. It's one half of one of these. Okay, cool. And pizza we trust. <laughs> okay, now I want to work on the back of this kite. So I'm going to flip this kite over since there's writing on it. And on the back, I'm going to uh, put my, my sticks. Okay, so I've got some options here. Uh, I remember uh, the other day I talked about how I go around in the uh, uh, spring and summer and fall and I pick out the weeds on the side of the road. They're literally on the side of the road. Uh, uh, I get a lot of these from the, uh, also the riverbank, uh, where the riffraff is, where the, the they throw the rocks down there at CVA. Uh, then, uh, a lot of grass grows up around there in the parking lots. Uh, in your, uh, vacant lot next door, if you got a vacant lot down the street or, along, uh, in your neighborhood, check it out. Schoolyard, edges of the schoolyards, they're everywhere, okay? Here's one of them right here. This is kind of the last of this one right here, but that's kind of what that looks like. Okay. And uh, and those are really good grasses right there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out one that I want to use for... doesn't have to be very big. In fact, I only have to pull it out just get get a piece of it and break a piece off. Okay, so I'm taking the one about this size right here. Okay. And I'm going to lay it right on there, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut it later to, to the right length. I want the heavier end at the top. I want the heavier end of the grass at the top of the kite. <clears throat> okay? And then I'm going to get some tape. And I don't need very much tape. We've talked about this before. You're talking about miniature kites. Therefore, we want miniature weights. Miniature amounts. Okay? I'm only getting a really small amount of tape there, okay? And I'm going to lay that tape underneath the top edge of this plastic about halfway of the tape, about half the tape. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. So it's just barely even uh, sticking out. Let's see, I guess I do need to uh, cut this to size. Okay. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to lay this on there if I can get hold of it. If there's a if there's a bow to it, see there's a bit of a bow to it. I want the I want the bow going down like that on top of the the plastic. Okay, the heavy end up. I just take my finger and put it on top of that tape, and it pulls it right up. And then I grab it and push it down on top of the uh, stick. Okay, I do the same thing on the bottom. Now that may or may not be enough. Okay. Uh, I think I may have actually gotten not enough. Okay, so I'm gonna get I'm gonna get another piece and I'm just gonna cut it in half lengthwise. Okay, in half lengthwise. I'm gonna lay that on top in the bottom. I'm gonna do the same thing up toward the top. I think I'll do it underneath the uh, Okay, now, now I want to go and I'll put my cross piece on. Now my cross piece, uh, yesterday I think I was talking to you about the uh, uh, fishing line. Okay, this is, uh, I think, uh, it's fishing line that I straightened. I took uh, my fishing string that came off of a spool and I wrapped it around a piece of plywood Okay, secured it at one end and then wrapped it around and secured the other end. Wrap it around five or six times, okay? That way you'll have plenty of extra for later. Uh, and then uh, you put it in the oven at 300 degrees for 30 minutes. 
When you take it out, at the end of 30 minutes, you put it aside and let it cool. Once it cools, it will cool into a straight position. Great little handy little thing to have to know. Okay, I'm going to get one that's the length of my, the width of my kite. Okay, this is my, my it's, only, it's only about that, that long. It is four inches long, as a matter of fact. Both of them are four inches long because in this case, we're making the eddy kite, which is the same Okay, I'm gonna get uh, a piece that's about uh, three quarters of an inch long, and I'm gonna cut it in half lengthwise. So now I have two, two pieces. Let's see, can you see them? Two pieces. Okay, I'm gonna lay one of them underneath the. The wing tip on one side. I'm gonna do it on the same on the other side, so that the tape is sticking out. It's sticking out both sides, okay? It's coming out like right here, okay? And same over here, okay? Okay. Yeah, there it is. That's the tape. I'm going to take that tape. I'm going to roll it over on top of the uh, spar. Now, remember that i got to put that... Uh, Okay, and when I do the other side, I want to make sure that I don't cause the uh, fishing line to buckle or twist or anything like that. Okay, I'm about there. Okay, we have a kite. Okay, now these kites have a bow to them. Okay, remember we called it an Eddie bow kite? An Eddie bow kite is... Uh, <clears throat> Remember this uh, this distance from this distance from uh, from the from here down to here is one fifth of the distance from the top to the bottom. Okay, it was four inches, so we went four fifths of an inch, which is about 0 0.8 or approximately 0.875, which is the decimal equivalent of seven eighths of an inch. Okay, that's where the seven eighths came from. <clears throat> the width. Is the same as the is the height, okay? And then the bow comes from when you have to bend it like this right here. It needs to be bowed. We want it to be bowed back, okay? Uh, now, in order to get the right bow, it only needs to be it needs to be bowed as much as that one fifth distance is. So it only needs it needs to be bowed quite a bit actually, okay? We may need some more tape in the middle too, too. But here's how you do bowing when it ha comes to the monofilament. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put another very small piece of tape uh, cut in half lengthwise. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna cut it in half one more time. So small, very small, only about an eighth, a square eighth of an inch. <laughs> okay. You know, I need to have my little document camera going. Okay. Now, the thing about monofilament is I can actually crease it right in the middle. Okay. And that tells me that helps it to keep that, that bend. I can also crease tape. Okay, so if you walk your finger up the edge of the, of the keel and just crease all the tape as well as the... Uh, Okay. I'm going to make I uh, uh, don't need much of a tail here I don't think well, let's see here let's use this one right here okay. I'm going to make a tail so I'm just going to get rid of that one okay, I'm going to make them a little bit bigger Or I could do a what they call a fuzzy tail. That might be fun. I don't know if it's possible to do that on here. Okay. We hold. Uh, take a lo longer piece of 
uh, uh, plastic, and then go and then lay your steel ruler not down the center of it, but to one side, and then go through and make little small cuts from the from the ruler over to the edge doing okay then you come then you lay the uh, ruler down on the uh, piece uh, not in the center but to the other to the other side and you and you make the same kind of cuts on this side okay can you see what I'm doing I hope Make a whole bunch of cuts. Uh, excuse me. I cannot believe I did that. Okay, so uh, we're going to finish this up here. Uh, I kind of rambled yesterday. And that was unacceptable. Cut that end off there. This should be two, lay two layers right here. There it is. So when I pull it apart, I didn't cut the other side, so it ends up being, and, and if it, It'll be kind of a fuzzy tail. If you kind of ruffle it up there, you'll see that it's getting kind of fuzzier. Okay, so we call that a fuzzy tail. Okay, now I'm going to put that on the end of my kite with a little bit of piece of tape. A little bitty, little bitty piece of tape. Talk a little bitty. Okay. And because this is a miniature kite, we want small amounts of things to be used. Okay. <clears throat> okay, here we have our miniature kite. <clears throat> we'll get our string together. What color string shall we use today? How about just plain old uh, white or black? Since it's an orange type, we'll make it a black string like Halloween. <clears throat> okay, where's that string edge? Is that it? Goodness gracious. Well, that's being a nuisance. Okay, I'll get another one. I guess we want to go with blue. Blue, blue and or orange go well together. And I'm going to cut just a small piece of string. Okay, I'm going to cut another piece of string about six inches long. That six inches I'm going to pull together. I'm going to make the loop knot. If you look at my, one of my other... If you look at one of my other uh, videos, YouTube videos, you'll see there's a, a video on making lark's heads and loop knots and overhand knots and square knots and gr granny knots, bow lines. I think there's a bow line in there. Okay, so I'm going to do that. <clears throat> and I'm going to slide, I'm going I'm to weave this through my hole here. Might need to push it through with a stick. When I go through, I come through on one corner of that, and I want to cross over both the cross piece and the kill. And I'm going to push it right down in there again so that it crosses over both of those. Hmm. I missed it. Now, by the way, you're starting on the front of the kite. Hmm. I can't get it to go through there. There it goes. Hmm. Thought about it. Pulled it right through there again. Let's try it this way. Okay, start on the front. Go through. Last time I started with the looped end. This time I'm starting with the knotted end. Might make it easier. Here we go. And I bring it through the loop, okay? So the knotted end comes through the loop. And you, oh, it didn't go through. Damn it. Hmm. I 
I'm having the dog this time. Okay, this third time's a charm. And there it is. Okay, so I've got this uh, little piece hanging off of it. Okay. And then I go ahead and I get my other string, the one that's about 24 inches long. I tie, the, tie another loop knot in that. And then I tie another little loop knot in the end of that loop. Okay. This gives you a little handle to pull on the two knots to unloosen them later on. I do the lark's head right here. I put my two fingers, my index finger and my thumb into the loop that I just made and I reach over and I grab the string coming going away and I pull it together and it creates this loop a slip knot that I slide over the end of that kite knot bridle oops and I pull them together. Let's see if I can do it. So easier said than done. Once again. There we go. Those knots will slide down to each other, and then you have your kite. Now I'm going to attach this other end of the string to my stick, which I'm just going to use a piece of this grass here. Let's see if it's enough. Okay. It's hard to see it. Okay, there it is. There, I'm, I'm, I'm getting it. Just do it now. Okay. So there you have it. <clears throat> and that's about the end of this show. Uh, right at, these things seem to be lasting right about 30 minutes. This one's 27 and a half minutes. You have a good day. Once again, this is River City Kites in, in Chattanooga, Tennessee, uh, 5519 Highway 153, Suite 6, <clears throat> 37343. Okay, you have a nice day. Once again, love you, American Kite Flyers Association and Kite Flyers of the World. Stay safe. <clears throat> God bless you. Or may you have a blessed day.